Hi, my name is Jim Byrne, Principal Assistant Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies. And today we're going to be going over the Data Pivot Appliance Benchmark Tests. And as always, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to shoot us an email at contact.datapivottech.com and we'll be glad to get right back to you. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll see more great content just like this. All right, so let's get started here. What I, th I thought I'd go over first is to get you familiar with what you've seen in some of our other videos. We'll typically show a, you know, a com vault environment with a com serve and some clients we're backing up in each location. And you have a media agent. This is what we're talking about today. This is the data pivot appliance right here. And the data pivot appliance is broken into two halves. It has uh, a high performance tier for the DDBs and then a large um, sequential storage uh, that's basically used to hold the backups. It's tuned for sequential writes, and this is tuned for high IOPS for the DD, for the SSDs, for the DDB. And one thing I do want to bring up while we're talking about the data data appliance, what I'm showing you is there's two halves to this thing. The first half is it's tuned hardware. It's tuned so that it fits the reads and write profiles for the DDB and backups for Commvault. So it's a high performance appliance. The second half of the data pivot appliance is we set this thing up for Commvault best practices for their installation. So now if you're watching this video today and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I'll just put some fast hardware together and we'll be all good to go. Well, it would be kind of like a, having a you know Formula One racer and uh, putting a teenager behind the wheel thinking he's gonna you know win the race. <laughs> So we have a lot of experience setting up Commvault. Uh, the engineers that are here at Commvault have not only worked as administrators at various companies, but we've done lots of professional services while we're here at Commvault. And you know, all of our customers that we set these up for have gotten very good usage out of them, and they're very happy with the performance. Now, the one other thing I want to bring up here is the uh, Data Pivot Appliance itself, just so you can get a visual of what it looks like. This is somewhat similar to the one I'm setting up today. I'm here in the lab just uh, doing some benchmarks. And the machine I'm on is pretty much like this. It has 12 drives in the front, and then it has some SSD in the back. This shows four here. The one I'm on today only has two, and they're set up in a mirror. So let me go over here to my tests. And I'm actually on a data pivot appliance right now. And these are some benchmark tests that I, I'd like to run these before we send them out in the field, just to make sure everything is set up correctly and it's running as expected. And I always just run them for 60 minutes just to make sure everything is good. And if you run it for 60 minutes, um, remember you're using a, a RAID controller and it's got caching in it. So what you wanna do is really overwhelm the cache so it simulates being um, under a backup load so you get some real numbers. So that's the other reason why I like to run it for a good 60 minutes. So these numbers that you see here are after these have been running for an hour and this would be the last run that you're seeing right here. So here's the dedupe database. This is over here, and that's running on the D drive. That's a mirrored SSDs. And over here is on the H drive. This is on RAID 6, and that's the 12 drives in the front. So let's go over what our tests are all about. First of all, the Commvault tests. Now, the dedupe database in Commvault is composed of 4K blocks. And you know that's just the way Commvault's database is laid out. And the backups are in 64K blocks. Now, it's been like that for a long time because anybody who's been in the storage world uh, knows that uh, storage tends to be in 64K blocks. If you're a NetApp guy, you probably know that. And I know Nexan used to do that as well. So they all use 64K blocks. So that's kind of the, the best size to do for your backups to fit a variety of vendors. So what we're going to do is with these appliances, we've tuned them for 64K blocks. All right, so I want to go over some givens. And what we have here is an SSD. And I know from doing this from, um, you know, just from experience, I know SATA and SAS SSDs tend to be about 70,000 IOPS. That's typically what I see. And if you mirror these things, you can get, get up to 140,000 IOPS. And the read-write profile for Commvault when it's running and it's been doing deduplication for quite a while, you'll see them at about 80% read, 20% write. So when we tune this thing, we're gonna make sure that we hit that profile so that it works well in the field. And the other side to this is just good old spinning hard disks. We have 12 of them. And each disk can do about 100 IOPS and they have a throughput of 250 megabytes per second each. So if everybody's running you know, at their top of their game and we had it maybe striped or something, you could get three gigabytes per second 
or you could get a maximum rate of 10.8 terabytes an hour. Now, there's no way in heck we're going to hit that because I'm going to be setting this up in RAID 6 because we want to be able to sustain two drive failures. Now, here's a number here that I wanted to put into your head so that you can just use it as a mental note while you're looking at these numbers. One gigabyte per second, that's B for bytes, <laughs> um, is equivalent to about 3,600 gigabytes per hour. And remember here, this is bytes, not bits. It's like if you're looking at, like say you're looking at a router that's 10 gigabit, that's 1.25 gigabyte per second. So again, we're using bytes. So the SSD results, let's start with that for the DDB. And I ran this test over here. And you'll see that we were getting about, you know, just shy of 15,000 IOPS for write and 94,000 IOPS for read. And that's right over here, third one down from the top. And let me just click this over here. One, two, three, third one down from the top. 94,000 for my IOPS and about 15,000 for my right IOPS. Now, remember what I said before, 80-20. So we're, we're spot on. So if you, uh, if you look at that ratio, it's pretty close. So that's right where you want to be to get the best performance for the TDB. Now, if the other side to this, I like to include these larger block numbers just so I can kind of see you know, what the possibilities are. <laughs> and um, you'll see that it levels out as you get up above 128K and you can see the speeds. Now the speeds down here are small just because of the sheer size of the transactions. The smaller the transaction, the slower they're gonna go. That's just, you know, computer science 101. That's just the way it's gonna, the way it is. But still plenty fast enough for DDB. It's just lots and lots and lots of little transactions. What matters here is the IOPS. And these are, these work great. And I know from having these in the field, they do, they work, they work extremely well. Now, on the backup side, what matters over here is not so much the IOPS because these 64K blocks that are written out by the backup software, they tend to be written out in large chunks. There's not a lot of random IO. It's more um, sequential as it's writing it out. So when you look here, you'll see that it's 64K blocks and each disk, you know, we were saying up here, you could do hundred IOPS and things like that. Now, when you go down here, you look at it, you're kind of, it's kind of puzzling. <laughs> How can this be so high? Now, the reason why this is so high, there's a RAID controller back here with a cache in it, and it's receiving all those transactions into the cache and then laying them out in big chunks on the back end onto the RAID 6 array that's on the back. So when we run this, um, you'll see when you get down in the smaller transactions, it's a little higher, but then as, as the blocks get bigger and bigger, the IOPS go down. So we're, if we're right here, third one down from the top, 64K, you know, we're about 18,000 for the writes and yeah, 25,000 for the read, it's pretty good, that's, that's fine. But what's more important here is the throughput. And remember with, with backup and recovery, there's, remember that's backup is coming in, recovery is going out. So you want, it, you want both of those speeds to be pretty close. Now Commvault had picked the 64K block size as we talked about, because that's what typically what vendors have done over the years. So I made our appliance tuned to that as well. You know, just in case maybe you want to add on a, a NAS filer to this appliance in the future or something like that, you want to keep the blocks right here. And you'll see the backups are at 1.12 gigabytes a second and going out is at 771. So what does that mean? Well, down here, when you look through your, your conclusions here, you'll see it's four terabytes an hour for writing and 2.8 terabytes for read. And I know, I know these numbers are good because we do uh, a lot of tape. So all of our customers do like tape. And when I'm reading off these internal disks on the data pivot appliance and shooting it out the tape, that's typically what I get, usually in the high twos, like 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, somewhere in there. That's typically what we see reading out for tape. So I know that's these tests are accurate because that's what I see in the real world. And the DDB from Commvault, they recommend you're 12,000 and up for the, for the Commvault DDB. And we hit that, no sweat. And I also know from empirical data, looking at our, our customers in cloud.commvault.com, and I look at the uh, query and insert times on the uh, deduplication databases, and they're all very good. And all of our customers love the way these things run. They run very, very well. So that's kind of like a quick overview just to show you the tuning that we do for our data pivot appliances to make sure that, that they work for Commvault. They're purpose-built to be used with Commvault. So that's what they're tuned for, and they work extremely well. 
And just to uh, go over it one more time, it's this is a data pivot appliance right here. 12 disks in the front, a couple of drives in the back. This is the one I'm doing today for benchmarking. And you know, this today I was just showing the typical benchmarks I like to, to run before we send these things out the door. And if you have any questions about uh, the data pivot appliances, you know, feel free to shoot us an email at contact at datapivottech.com. We'll be glad to go over, you know, what the appliances entail. Um, and also we'll go, we can go over what we do for professional services. So when this box goes into your environment, it will work very well with Commvault and meet your needs for protecting your environment. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll get more great content just like this. And thank you for your time today.